Hey everyone, welcome back to Pete's Garage. Well, now that we have all that torque stuff out of the way, we can continue building the 440. Now we're going to install our hydraulic roller lifters, push rods, our rocker shafts, the rockers. We'll set the spacing, we'll set our lash and the preload for the uh, hydraulic lifter, which is very important. We'll talk about NVH, which is noise, vibration, and harshness. Uh, that's a lot of the valve train noise that you get when you don't have the uh, proper preload. And if you have too much preload, you can end up ruining your cam. But let's start with putting the lifters in. All right, now I have all my lifters here. And when you work with your lifters, you want to be very, very careful not to bang them together so you don't put any nicks in any of the surfaces. That way they fit in the lifter bore and you don't have any problems with sticking or gouges, that kind of thing, because you lose oil pressure and, uh, and it will cause a nightmare. But what I want to do is I want to clean these first because even though these are new out of the box and they do look very clean, uh, they may not be clean on the inside, especially in the roller side. So what I'm going to do to all these lifters, I'm just going to put them in, in a mineral spirit solution. This is just mineral spirits. And I know it looks red, but I had oil in there and it looks just red from the oil. So I'm going to rinse these off like this. Just to get them nice and rinsed off. And I'm going to take all of them and I will blow them all off just to make sure that they're all oil free and they're all ready to install. So I'll do that to all eight sets and then we'll lube them and put them in. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting the lifters in and I checked all the lifters when I, as I was cleaning. I was inspecting to make sure that there's no nicks on any of the rollers, that the outside of the lifter is nice and clean, there's no nicks. And all I'm going to do is, I've already started, I just have a, a cup of oil here, and I'm just going to dip them in here, just to get them covered with oil, like that. And no, you do not need to soak your lifters overnight in oil. I'd like to know how that started. I don't know where that came from. Uh, the link bar. The link bar usually faces towards the inside. I'm not going to say always, but usually. And when you put the lifters in, it should be in there nice and free. Nice and easy. You shouldn't have anything hanging up. If, if you have any resistance, stop because there's something wrong. They should all be nice and free in there. So just take your time. You're going to have oil on your hands while you're doing this or on your gloves like I'm doing this. I don't want to have any of my finger or uh, oil for my skin getting on any of the parts so I'm using gloves and be careful when you're handling them because you obviously don't want to drop it and put a nick in one of the rollers or anything else you don't I mean the cams kind of exposed in the middle there if you drop something and nick one of the lobes on the cam you're gonna have a bad problem there okay and my last one if any of you know why that started why, why people started soaking their lifters overnight. I, I know the idea, you soak them overnight and the idea being that the oil will seep inside and completely fill the lifter if it's a hydraulic lifter. But um, when you finish building the engine or right before you button it up and you fill, up, fill it up with oil and you run, you put a, a, a drill motor on the pump and you turn the pump and you fill it up, the first thing, first thing that's going to get filled are it's going to go through the crank and it's going to come up the runners on the end, the oil runners, the oil uh, jackets, and it's going to come into the passageways for the lifters. And oil is going to, high pressure oil is going to come in here and it's going to fill these lifters anyway. So I don't know why you'd want to soak them overnight, but if that's the thing you want to do, go right ahead. I'm not going to say don't do it, but I'm just saying it's not really necessary. Okay, all my lifters in, let's go to the push rods. All right, here are the push rods, and this is exactly as I received them. I just took them out of the package. And they do have a coating on there. It feels like a, it's, it's a sticky, kind of a tacky coating. Almost feels like Cosmoline, but it's sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash these all off before we install them. Just wash them off in uh, mineral spirits, and it'll be good enough. Now I couldn't just put the engine together and order my push rods ahead of time. I had to actually measure for the push rods because I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to need with the cam, the hydraulic lifter, hydraulic roller lifter, the cylinder heads, the rocker arms, I really didn't know what I was going to need. Uh, so I had to put this together and measure and the push rod I'm using is 8.905 long which is a standard length push rod. It's actually 10,000 shorter than I would have liked but since it's a uh, standard size I'm going to do that instead because it's a lot cheaper than having custom push rods made. 
Now I'm just going to sit these in here and there's plenty of clearance in the head. You can see there's plenty of clearance for these push rods. So I'm going to sit these in place gently and I don't have to worry about putting oil on the bottom because there's still oil left in the lifter when I put the lifters in. Okay. Incidentally these were very dirty. Uh, whatever coating they put on there to protect them from rust a lot of it came off and it was quite filthy. I talk about cleanliness in a, a lot but it's very very important. As I said before I've never had an engine fail because it was too clean. So if you wipe things off, uh, blow out the uh, lifter bores, make sure they're clean before you put everything together, keep your parts nice and clean. I'm not going to guarantee it, but you'll be pretty damn close to having an engine that's going to work the first time and it's going to last a long time. FM, foreign material, or any debris inside the engine is a huge enemy, and I've seen engines fail on startup and take it apart and you find something inside that caused the engine to lock up. Alright, let's put the uh, rocker rockers on and I'll get that set up and we'll start talking about lash. Now first things first, I have uh, the lube and all the cups of all the push rods and what I'm going to do is I have a dry erase marker here, a black one, and I'm going to color all the tips of all the valves because when I set the rocker arms on here and rotate the engine I got to take the rockers off to do some spacing anyway and I want to make sure that the rockers are going to be right in the middle of the valve and the dry erase marker is nice because it, it comes off it does, a sharpie is a little bit harder to see so now that I have those covered we can put the rocker rail on now I can set my rocker rail in place and the important thing is the oil hole the oil hole on the rocker rail goes down so this would point, I have to turn this so it's facing the other way. So that goes down. The other thing, your rockers, when the adjustable part of the rocker for the push rod, the thread is supposed to be half in and ha a half in on each side. And I have them all set roughly to the same distance so I can bolt this down and we'll do the fine adjustment later. But first we're going to sit this in there and I have to get the, the uh, distance between each rocker set to ten thousandths. Now I'll put my clamps in place here and I'll just start to hand tighten these down and one thing to note if you buy aftermarket heads and you use this aftermarket type clamp system this bolt uh, in these two positions in this position here and in this position here the bolt is going to be shorter so I have to replace these bolts with different bolts because the uh, OEM the way it comes from the factory that the uh, bolts are much different and the head is designed different so those will fit differently so if you get it and uh, here I'll show you this is the bolt this is the bolt that comes with these uh, rocker arms the rocker rails if I put this bolt in here you can see how long that is it's just way too long and that's designed for original heads if you had the original cast iron heads now I can start to tighten these down and we'll see where we are now this is the process I'm going to go through for all 16 of these rockers and it's going to be kind of lengthy so I won't film the whole thing but I'll give you the whole just the whole thing first you want to make sure that the roller is riding right in the middle of the valve you don't want it to be off centered one way or another if it is you have to shim it one direction or the other the other thing is I have to check the gap inside here and the the spec is 10 to 15 thousandths now I have 10 there and I have 10 on this side just about 10 okay now if I were to want need to shim that one way or another I'd have to use these shims and these are the shims I'll just show you these shims these are the shims that come with the with the rocker rail and these shims are 20 thousandths thick so if I were to put one shim in there it's going to take up a lot of space so even though the spec is 10 to 15, if I add 10 plus the 20, if I don't have more than 30 thousandths total gap on between both of these rocker arms in between, putting one of these things here will put it under 10 thousandths. So I can't use a shim unless I have to go over 30 thousandths. So I'm going to measure the gap. I'm going to measure my gap on each side for all of these. You have to make sure that these are pushed together. I'll do that for all and make sure that they're all rolling in the center 
and we'll see how everything works out. All right, I'm set. None of the gaps on any of these were more than 25 thousandths total. So I'm good. I can't use any shims. One thing to note, though, if you're putting this together and you need to shim and you have more on one side than the other, you can take these caps and these will move and you can pick up a couple thousandths either direction. So the idea is try and get that in the middle, measure, and then tighten it down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these down and we'll rotate the engine over a few times to see how the valves work out. Okay, I still don't have the lash set yet, but I do have these tight enough where they will be pushing all the valves open. And I'm going to need a ratchet. <laughs> I'm going to turn the engine over a bunch of times. To get the uh, valves to open and let my rocker arms and the rollers touch all the valves. Do it a few times. And now what I can do is now I'm going to pull this back off and I'm going to look at where the rollers are touching on the tips of the valves. Alright? We'll lift it up and we'll see what we find. Pull a little too fast there. Alright, put that down. Let's take a look. Alright, if we look at the the roller part here, and you can see on the roller there's a straight black line on there. Incidentally, these are 1.6 rockers. Uh, I know someone's going to ask me. So they're 1.6. So we have a straight line on there. And let's go look at the valves. And I'll try and pick a good one here. Okay, here's a good one. You see here, you can see where that line is like straight, straight across the center. You can kind of see the line on that one. The line, even though it wiped off the bottom, you can see how on all of these, the line is in the center of the valve. Here's a, here's a good one. You can see this one? See the line in the middle? Same thing with this one. Line's in the middle. So now I know the roller is in the center of the valve this way, and I adjusted it so it made sure that it was in the center this way. Now I can put the whole rocker assembly back on there and torque it down. Okay, we're ready to set the lash. I have oil on the tip of the valve, so there's oil on the roller, oil on the valve. I have the lube inside here for the tip of the lifter where it engages in the push rod. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the engine over until both of these valves are closed. And I can look inside the engine and I can see when both valves are on, or when both lifters are on base circle. Pretty easy to see. Alright, we've got that. <clears throat> now what I can do is I can put a Allen wrench in here and I'm going to back this off until it's really loose. And you want to be careful when you do this, it's very easy to compress the push rod. I mean, I can like that. There's my lifter compressing right there. I don't want to do that. I just want to take up the free, the free lash there, get it to zero, and right there it's zero. And you go to you can go one half to a full turn. I like to do a full turn. Put a little more preload on there and do the same thing for this one. Okay, one full turn. Then I take, put my, I can run these down by hand a little bit. Put my box wrench on there. I'm going to put an Allen in to hold that in place. I'm just going to torque these down. You don't have to yank on it, you don't need 50 foot pounds on that thing, just enough. just so they're tight and that's good enough. Now I'll go through the rest on this side and then I have to do the entire process on the other side for the other cylinder head. One last thing to check before I go to the other side. I want to open and close these valves and make sure that that push rod doesn't come close to interfering anywhere with the rocker arm. So I'll look at the back here. Okay. I have clearance in the back. I'll check a couple valves. Check a couple. Clearance there. Okay, so it looks good. Clearance on all the rocker arms. Okay, when you're all done, if you want to give yourself a quick sanity check, if you've installed them all right, all of these 
should be sticking up the same amount all the way around. So you see how much barely there's just about that much thread sticking out. They're all about the same. If I will go all the way down here, they're all just about the same. And if one of them's way off, just go through the process again because you probably just missed something or didn't have uh, the cam on base circle. So just make sure that they're all the same and you'll be good. Okay, the valve train is installed. Just remember to take your time, make the measurements, check to make sure everything's right, recheck it, do it again, and make sure that it's right. You don't want to start it up and find out that you have something wrong and all of a sudden you bend the valve and your, your uh, engine's toasted. So take your time and do a nice job, do a nice neat job, and it'll work out just fine. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.